Hey guys, welcome to Rich with Cars. I'm Rich. Today we're going to go over some of the details that Lexus Europe Newsroom unveiled in a recent press release that came out about uh, a few days ago actually on the 2024 Lexus LC 500. Now they've actually uh, included a lot of improvements and additions to the 2024 model year. Of course, this is not the North American version or uh, release, but this is the European, which I would not be surprised if they end up doing also for the North American market very shortly. Now, part of these changes include things like the multimedia system, some new colors, but you know what? Let's dive in and take a look. So diving right into it, we are here at the Lexus Europe newsroom and we can see the 2024 model year enhancements for Lexus's flagship LC Coupe convertible and LC Ultimate Edition. Now, when I went over this two weeks ago, talking about what the Polish website discussed, they never mentioned anything about an Ultimate Edition. Just going over some of the major points, as they mentioned over here, there's gonna be a new multimedia system with a large touchscreen and greater functionality, new cabin color schemes, new exterior paintwork colors, suspension and body changes that sharpen the driving experience, more capabilities with the Lexus Safety System Plus, and an exclusive rear wing, bodywork color, and styling details uh, for the Ultimate Edition. Now, Ultimate Edition most likely will be, I would not be surprised if it would end up being a uh, 2024 Inspiration Series, but now with the bespoke editions you know, being an option, I'm not sure if they're gonna keep it with as a bespoke or if they'll make this uh, European Ultimate Edition into a North American Inspiration Series. So they're basically increasing the size to a 12.3 inch touchscreen. They increased from a 10 inch screen and now that touchscreen is gonna be basically like they did with the LS 500 and we can see some pictures over here. You guys can see over here that it's been basically tacked on. Of course, making it bigger and because the dash would not be able to fit this, they had no other option than to put it there. My personal opinion on this is that of course it breaks up the continuity and the smooth sort of lines of the dash on the LC. Some people like it, some people don't. It really depends on what you're looking for in terms of are you looking for more functionality or are you looking for beauty and, and design? Talking about this 12.3 inch touchscreen, that means that they also remove the uh, touchpad that was there before, as you guys can see over here. There's no more touchpad. Now they actually included a, seems like a button over here that will directly take you to the seat climate controls. And they also have a camera view button. That means that I believe they're gonna have a 360 degree view camera. Part of this infotainment system now also includes smartphones integrate with the multimedia system via Apple CarPlay with a wireless or wired connection. So that means that Apple CarPlay is gonna be wireless, but unfortunately Android Auto is gonna be only wired. Android Auto with a wired connection. I don't know why that, that is. The other thing which I think they missed out on in terms of an opportunity, they still don't have a wireless charging pad. I guess probably because they didn't have a chance to really fit it in there. They could have maybe put it into the uh, middle glove compartment area over there. Once you open it up, you could actually put it in there, but it would have been, uh, I guess, a little bit difficult to integrate that in there. They also added, alongside with the 12 volt accessory socket, which was there before, and they also had two USB-A ports. Now they actually replaced one of those USB-A ports with a USB-C for device charging. So most likely that's gonna give you faster charging when you wire your, your phone in there. One of the things that is gonna be major that's part of that touchscreen improvement and addition is the software that goes behind it, which now probably will have the same UI as all the newer Lexuses like the NX, the LX, uh, latest, iteration of the Lexus UI, which uh, allows you to 
basically wake it up through voice commands and say, hey, Lexus. You have also a higher resolution in terms of the screen resolution and they seemingly also said that they have a better sound system. The speakers have been changed in the rear seat backs and instrument panel sides. So it still remains a 13 speaker Mark Levinson surround system, that, but they probably also improved the, the speaker system as well. Two new interior color schemes. One of them is a blue and white, and the other one seems to be a black and rose, which was also included in the 2022 Inspiration series that we've seen before. But now that it seems like it's probably gonna be a standard color choice that you can spec out. You can see the blue over here, which is in my opinion, gorgeous, but at the same time, in my opinion, a little bit too much blue. Because they've actually updated the infotainment, they took away the design aspect. If you guys remember, there was a sort of a little design behind an acrylic front panel area that lit up at night. Now it seems like they did that just with leather. It doesn't show the rose on any of the press release pictures. And then of course we do have new paintwork, which it doesn't show on, on any of the press release pictures, but it seems like some of the exterior changes for the paint, you have a heat blue or a, a blue type of exterior, which I think is gonna be the ultrasonic blue. And then they also have the Sonic Copper, which they call in that market over there, which is gonna be basically the same color that we've seen before on the newer Lexus RX models as well. So you have those two new colors, and of course you have some uh, new wheels as well, Ford's wheels, which are basically a 20 inch super gloss black metallic, a 21 inch with a 3D machine finish, and a 21 inch with a two-tone black and hyper-chrome finish. We don't know how they look like because they didn't actually include those in the pictures. And then finally we have the Lexus Safety System Plus, which they've added a multitude of things. Uh, they said here they have the road sign assist that can quickly reset vehicle speed according to speed limit information. And the dynamic radar cruise control, which regulates the car speed to the vehicle in front, now also has curve speed reduction to automatically adjust vehicle the vehicle speed according to the band radius. They have that there before, but now they actually improved uh, bicyclist de detection over here, as you guys can see. And then finally, which was not covered on the Polish website, they said that they have an enhanced driving uh, refinement, which includes uh, changes to the uh, suspension's uh, coil springs, shock absorber tuning, rear suspension, uh, suspension member, stabilizer spring rates, underbody braces, steering column and steering gearbox fastening, and axle hub bearing and wheel fastening. They also say that front engine mounts have also been revised and the time gap reduced between vehicle body and powertrain movement. We've seen this before with Lexus where they make incremental changes. It seems like they made a few more changes to this particular model year that's coming up including as part of the uh, enhanced driving and enhancements, they've also improved once again, the 10 speed automatic transmission in the shift control, more so than anything, when you have the, the gear selected in the D mode and not in the manual mode. So now the D mode will have better responsiveness uh, when you have it in the different uh, modes or driving modes, as in Sport S, Sport S Plus modes, and as you guys can see, they say that the Sport S Plus gives a more manual-like driving experience in D, selects the gear for optimum acceleration and deceleration and performs downshifts when braking. So of course, they give it a more sporty feel to the transmission itself. And then finally, they go over the, style, the body styling for the Ultimate Edition. Now, we haven't seen the wing, but they've actually spoke about the aerodynamic changes that they've made to the uh, to the body, which includes some uh, canards that are integrated into the bumper. They're not actually added on, but it seems like they're integrated as you guys can see in this picture over here. It seems like it was part of the mold of the front bumper now. I don't understand why they did that. The LC is not necessarily or exactly a sports car. It's a GT car, but they say that that improves some of the handling and aerodynamic characteristics of the vehicle. So. I guess we'll only find out once 
once you actually get to drive it. But they also said that there's a, a, a new rear wing as well, which I think is probably gonna be the same wing that we saw in the 2021 Inspiration Series, which is basically that carbon aviation inspired wing that wraps around the ends of the, of the rear of the, of the vehicle. So uh, it says over here, another more clearly visible aerodynamic feature is a coupe's black carbon rear wing. This applies our dynamic expertise from air racing, further evidence of how Lexus has taken inspiration from the association with Japanese aerobatic and race pilot Yoshihide Yoshimuroya. Ultimately, there's those changes that they did and of course some changes to the color or the body color on the Ultimate Edition, which they say is a sort of a satin white. I don't know if it's very noticeable here. I think it looks really, really nice, especially with the blue. Some of the other changes that they said was they blacked out the rear apron over here, or the rear diffuser, alongside with the exhaust housings, as well as the trims around the headlights and the taillights, and also the grill surrounds. I'm not sure if they also colored the center grille in a black color, because they did mention that black appears at the front of the car on the radiator grill and moldings. This is probably the largest amount of changes that they've put on the LC since it's come out. Uh, of course, the other large changes came in 2021, but I, I honestly believe that with the addition of the infotainment system, some improvements on the body itself in terms of uh, driving dynamics, the improvements on the transmission, some new colors for both the interior and exterior, and then also body changes with the canards as well, will basically show that they've made quite a few substantial changes. Now, if you're in the market for an LC, is this something that you should wait for on a 2024? I'm sure that the North American market is probably gonna have something very similar to this. I personally believe that a lot of the body changes can be done yourself in the aftermarket. So like for example, I've already done this on my vehicle, blacking out the entire rear diffuser alongside with the uh, exhaust housings. I've also uh, blacked out all the chrome and the headlight and taillight housings as well. So those changes are not major, those can be done, but if you're huge on the infotainment, you wanna have a better experience, more modern experience, then I would definitely wait for the 2024. That's a major change that you cannot do in the aftermarket, alongside with the changes that they did on the body itself, for example, in terms of the driving dynamics, in terms of changes on the suspension, and the rigidity as well, and moreover, uh, on the transmission as well. Of course, and then, Finally, uh, there's the changes that they did on the interior and exterior colors. Exterior, you can always make a change through wraps. Interior, not so much. You'd have to take it to an aftermarket upholstery company that can do that, those changes for you. But if you're looking for a new color for the interior, like that blue or the dark with the rose, then I would highly recommend that you wait for the 2024 model year to come out. Very good changes to see. Finally, Lexus putting in you know, some of these functionalities, they took away the uh, trackpad, they added a, a shortcut button for the seat climate controls, and more, more so than anything else that a lot of LC owners have actually complained about was having at least a front camera. Lexus took it a, a, a level beyond that, and now they've actually added a 360 degree camera. They spoke about how they changed the side view mirror housings to be able to fit in cameras on those side view mirrors, which basically says it will be 360 degree camera. Would it make me change my car, or up, upgrade my car to a 2024? No, uh, I, I've made a lot of modifications on my LC. I'm happy the way it is. And I still have quite a, uh, quite a bit of low miles on it. I have about 25,000 miles. So I don't think it's enough for me to actually make those changes. Like I mentioned before in the, um, in the video that I did two weeks ago, I would most likely wait for Lexus to release details on the LFA or LFR uh, model or the LFA successor, if you want to call it. I actually released some footage of Lexus actually testing out that vehicle. I'd rather wait for that because I think that's going to be a much better uh, upgrade for me, uh, but everybody's different. So 
Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, please uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Comment below with any questions or your opinions on this new 2024 LC especially the ultimate edition. I think it's pretty cool. Let's see what, uh, let's see what the North American market comes out with. I'm sure it's going to be something very similar. Anyways, I'll see you guys on the next one and uh, make sure to share this video with others that are looking to the LC. Thanks guys. All right. Take care.